And shortly we'll get to the gentleman from Florida who I know uh, wants to say a few words and then needs to uh, uh, leave, but I hope that the gentleman from Texas can also remain and we'll continue this dialogue. Well, I want to thank the gentleman from Virginia and uh, uh, look forward also to working with you on this balanced budget amendment. Uh, as our colleague from Colorado said, the single most important constitutional amendment that is bantied about these days, and there are several that are important, but there is none more important than a balanced budget. If we only could do one constitutional amendment in the next 10 years, let's do this one. Think back. I wonder who those 35 senators were uh, in 1995 who all voted no on the balanced budget amendment. Uh, if any of them are still in Congress, if we could point to the one of them and say, had you voted yes in 95, then surely during the, the surplus years we experienced in the late 90s, it's easy to, to pass a balanced budget at that point in time because there's no, nobody's uh, uh, pigs getting stuck. Uh, and all the states would have ratified it. We would have avoided trillions and trillions of dollars in debt had one senator uh, moved over in 95. It'd be interesting to see who those, if there's any of those 35 that voted no are still in the Congress right now and would fess up to having uh, a, a good slug of this, uh, of this problem. My colleagues all know that anybody can start a diet tomorrow. The, the easiest diet to start is the one you start tomorrow. We need to start a diet today. The single greatest threat to our way of life is not al-Qaeda, it's not the Islamic jihadists, as bad as they are. They will get some of us, but they will not get all of us. The single biggest threat to our way of life, in my view, is the growth in this federal government as, as, uh, as, as demonstrated by the, the growth in spending. If you look at the chart, the more insidious two things about that chart are that one, the 2010 deficit is estimated to be 1.4 trillion, which I think is not on that chart yet. Um, two, the out years, which are the least accurate, uh, the out years are all increasing. The deficit goes up each of those, they can't even put together a set of numbers and facts that at least give the facade of showing that they're gonna drop spending in the out years. The third- if The gentleman yield, that's very similar to the fact that uh, over the weekend, three different uh, uh, representatives of the administration got on television, claimed that the stimulus, uh, which we've seen, has uh, uh, not resulted in job creation, but rather two and three quarter million jobs lost, claimed, well, there would have been more jobs lost had we not had the stimulus, but they can come nowhere near agreeing with each other on what that those jobs saved are. Uh, I think the only really accurate figure is exactly what's uh, reported by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which points out that we've lost 2.7 mo million and, and jobs. And another point there is that the, uh, even over the weekend, they were saying that, you know, yes, we've lost 7 million jobs, but we've created X number of million jobs. I mean, the real issue is the net job loss, because those are folks who are out of work. Uh, and so that's, a, that's kind of a hollow thing to brag on. But the other thing about the chart, it assumes that the Bush tax cuts from 2001 to 2003 expire. Hundreds of billions of dollars in new taxes are in those numbers, and those numbers are still as bad as they look, and, and with, the, with the trillions of dollars of deficit that are accumulating. Now, the, the bad news about this is that we're not going to pay that debt off. I had a, a young first, a fifth grade student in Fredericksburg, Texas, asked me one time at a town hall meeting. I was doing a town hall meeting for a, a school that was K-12. A little fellow raised his hand and said, uh, Mr. Congressman, what's the plan to pay off the national debt? And I looked at him, I said, what? Which is a technique you use to kind of gain time to think about what your answer might be. And he said, yes, sir, what's the, what's the plan to pay off the national debt? And I said, young man, that's the single best question I've ever been asked. There is no plan to pay off the national debt. So what we are doing is that we're putting a floor under future generations tax rates. Because this cumulative debt, we, America will constantly pay the interest on this debt from now till eternity. And so what we've done to future generations is so you're going to have to tax yourselves enough to pay the interest on the debt from now on. That's before you get to start thinking about national security. That's before you get to think about homeland security or anything else you might want to do with, your, with the world you inherit from us. You're going to have to pay the debt because your parents and grandparents didn't have the the physical discipline to just say, no, there's some good things going on out here. So I would uh, love to stay around and visit with you this afternoon with some other comments, but I know our colleague from Florida wants to talk as well, but I couldn't agree with my colleague from Virginia more. This is, H, what do you call it, HRJ1. House Joint Resolution House Joint one. Resolution 1. It should be number one in our hearts and number one on the docket for this uh, Congress. It should have been that uh, uh, a year ago in January. Uh, and it ought to be tomorrow uh, on, the, on the ballot to be talking about because uh, it's not, there's nothing more important in, to our way of life than, than gaining control of our, in a, uh, in a, our, our, our 
a proliferate uh, spending way. So uh, thank you, gentlemen, for having this uh, uh, hour tonight. Look forward to some additional comments. Well, I thank the gentleman, and uh, I, I thank him for his comments about House Joint Resolution Number 1.